Uh, I'm just setting up the uh, live stream and starting the recording. So one, one more second, everyone. Okay, good to go. I call to order this meeting of the Public Art Committee of March 27, 2024 at 2.16 p.m. We have begun the recording and live streaming. Is the court reporter present? I believe she is present. She said that she was having uh, issues with her microphone, but she can hear us. Okay, great. Um, so we'll proceed to roll call. Roll call, please. Awuna. Present. Bethia. Present. Martinez. Present. McDill. Uh, and for DPW, I believe we have uh, Chip Gall. Present. Thank you. Okay, so we'll proceed to the approval of commission, minute, commission minutes from the Public Art Committee from February 2024. So does any commissioner have any comments on last minute, last month's minutes? None. Okay, may we have a motion to approve um, last month's minutes? I make a mo motion to approve last month's minutes. Okay. Second it. We'll call for that approval. Awuna? Aye. Bethia? Aye. Martinez? Aye. Okay. Do we have any correspondence? Uh, the only item of correspondence was the support letter for the, uh, no, that, sorry, that's for the Civic Design Commission, so no correspondence. <laughs> And do we have any public comment? Uh, we do not have anyone uh, who is asked to give general public comment. Okay. And there are no briefing items on today's gen agenda, correct? That is correct. Okay. So with that, we will proceed to hearing and action. So we will begin with a Northside Ensemble mural. Uh, Janelle, you should be joining as a panelist. Uh, I have you and Clay. Is there anyone else from this application that needs to speak? Um, not at this time. Um, we did invite Dan Peterson um, just in case there were any questions that came up that maybe he could answer, but Clay and I will be um, presenting this portion. Okay, thank you. Um, if you would... Uh, like to give your brief introduction, you can uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks everyone for having us. Um, I'm Janelle Young, um, public artist and muralist, and I have uh, Clay with me as well um, from Hounds Creative Agency in Pittsburgh. Um, I believe you all have the kind of background of this project. Um, and I was going to allow Clay to kind of go through the, the first um, couple of slides. Hey everyone, I'm Clay. Um, the first slide that we're gonna go over is the renovation uh, slide, um, kind of discussing the existing condition, uh, normal wear and tear, uh, the court, it has cracks, um, it's uneven in certain areas, uh, needs fresh coat of paint backboards uh, and rim uh, uh, need to be replaced. Um, the cord is used very often. So from just years of wear, uh, we uh, were granted this opportunity to have five-star five star basketball and project back backboard uh, to fund the um, entire renovation.
Um, and so with that being said, uh, this contest, we were able to share it virtually. Uh, we were able to spread it through word of mouth. It was a pretty, pretty big success, uh, really brought the community together in a really positive manner. Uh, it was very cool to see. Uh, we created a public engage page for feedback um, with an online survey to kind of discuss how the court was going to be, the mural would be done. Um, and uh, that was great to really hear all the stories that people had about it, um, just past experiences, what they think the court could look like. Um, what they thought on the thematic elements that we uh, had throughout our story. Uh, also, we um, have reached out to Allegheny City Central Association, uh, Joan and uh, Matthew, who are part of that. Uh, we discussed with them as well as went to a meeting and uh, um, displayed our project and what we were looking to do to make sure that we had, um, you know, their blessing on uh, doing something like this within the community. Um, we are also going to be working with the Children's Museum for um, programming uh, pre and post the installation to uh, get the youth involved. Um, and lastly, uh, just planning community focus uh, event for the unveiling, um, getting people together, different small businesses, um, art groups, you name it, everyone we can that wants to be a part of this. Uh, we're just looking to really connect. Okay, thank you, Clay. And um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the um, proposed design um, because I will, uh, I have designed this and um, I will be helping Project Backboard to install it as well. Um, so from the themes that were on the previous page, um, I came up with this design with our team and we really wanted to um, reflect the essence of, of jazz. We talked about the history of jazz kind of in the background um, and how we got to this project. Um, and also, you know, this court named the jungle by the community. Um, we wanted to bring that to life as well. And just the, the spirit and special, um, the, the special gift that is basketball. So um, I think some of it is a little bit, you know, like the center court is pretty self-explanatory, but wanted to really give like a prideful focal point to this. Um, that was something that was brought up in the community meetings was just like having a sense of pride on the north side. Um, also, just some, some kind of like interpretations, um, like the three rings at center court. Um, I wanted it to kind of you know, feel like a ripple effect, like we're having a, a, a positive um, impact on the community. Um, also kind of the double entendre of uh, looking like a vinyl record, which is um, a theme that plays throughout this design. Um, then also some of the more uh, symbolism that I typically use in my work, like the three, the clusters of three dots um, to represent like past, present and future. We talked a lot about bridging the gap between generations and uh, bringing folks together collectively um, through both the in-person meetings and the online survey. This was something that was brought up many times. Um, and then also the stars on the court were intentional as well. And one reason for that is um, just the iconic kind of graphic image that is uh, replicated in a lot of uh, basketball culture um, of the stars. And then also kind of as like a, a place marking um, for what is now becoming very popular for uh, kind of long range shots. Uh, for anyone who plays, I feel like that's something that people are starting to enjoy and is also kind of becoming a bit trendy um, to, you know, to shoot from there. Um, and then also wanting to incorporate uh, different types of plants, just not only to relay the jungle, but um, also to uh, kind of, again, bring in this idea of, you know, youth 
and growth mixing with wisdom um, and, and covering, which um, were some things that were brought up as concerns and things that are exciting and hopeful for this community. Um, and then I will also say, lastly, my signature tribal triangles um, are always meant to um, represent community and family togetherness, kind of taking care of each other. And then I believe, yeah, the next slide is just so you can see a little bit uh, more detail. The one thing that we have considered um, with Dan is uh, just making a decision between orange lines and white um, for like the three point line, half court, like that out that outer border. Um, I will say I do love the orange to, to give it a pop though. And I'm just gonna point out one tiny thing because I see that um, on this rendering um, at the top of the key, <clears throat> it will be a smooth, uh, round circle, it kind of looks like it comes to a point right here, but that, that will not be the case. It will just be a standard um, top of the key there. But I think that's it. So we are happy to have any questions or um, discuss anything. Thank you. Um, so are there any public comments for this project? Uh, we do not have anyone registered for public comment, and I do not see any uh, hands raised. Okay, so commissioners, um, open up the floor for any comments and questions. Hello, this is Commissioner Martinez. Thank you so much for such a beautiful rendering and presentation. I am very happy to see this project moving forward. As you are well aware, there was a tremendous wellspring of public support for the project during the competitive phase of being selected as this site. I'm curious, and this is merely a curiosity, also please accept my sincere apologies for my extreme tardiness. It, Long story, but I, I do deeply respect your time. Um, it's very valuable to me. Anyway, so has this rendering been shared with any of those preliminary supporters or pub or um, opened up to like social media commentary of any kind? Um, the rendering has not been shared, um, but what I will say is um, we, um, in our discussions with them have kind of, um, manage the expectation that they may not see the draft before it comes to the art commission, but um, giving them an understanding of like my creative process, which is to internalize their stories um, and, and use the symbolism um, to come up with a design. So they were not necessarily expecting to see the design, um, but you know, we are really excited about bringing it here and sharing it before it is installed. Wonderful. Yes, I'm so glad we have the opportunity to see it here today. Is there any um, support from those stakeholders to do any sort of public celebration of the opening of the courts again? Yeah, um, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, first, I would say like everyone has shown such great support um, and kind of willing to jump in wherever they can. Um, we are still kind of in the middle of planning what that event might look like. Um, but uh, the Children's Museum has been incredibly involved. Um, they, we are planning on actually having some of their um, kids from like their summer camp and things to come help install. Mm -hmm. um, and then also they'll be hosting a, a table at the unveiling as well. And then um, of course the residents, and then we've also spoken to um, Erin Tobin from, um, from the parks and she is um, helping us push this kind of to the north side from, from their end as well um, for the residents to, to get involved and be able to come out and support um, when it's time. That'd be great. I would love to, as a commissioner, be part of that process and attend and help sure. promote that event. And if there are other ways that we as a commission can be helpful to you, um, please do uh, let us know how we can be supportive. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Okay, hello, this is Commissioner Bethia. I wanted to say that it is absolutely stunning. I'm just curious as to whether the um, participants were aware of the color choices because they're very handsome and a little unusual. Normally when we see mural things, they're in primary colors. And it's so nice to see something a little bit more sedated and sophisticated. Can you talk a little bit more about the color choices? Absolutely, and this this is actually funny because <clears throat> uh, play from Hounds, you know, um, we kind of had to collaborate and shift a little bit on on the color palette um, specifically for functionality, right? So this is used by kids. This is used by the school right across. This is used by um, you know our peers as well. But I've also done other asphalt and court projects and knowing like the foot traffic and that kind of thing um we kind of wanted to steer a little bit more toward this like earthy palette um that is still has a vibrancy to it but just in a way that you might not expect um so we wanted to just be really mindful of of all of those things um so yeah that's that's kind of clay did you have anything to add to that as far as the color palette no i feel like you answered it really um okay we wanted to kind of keep it, um, you know, Janelle usually works with a lot of vibrant colors and things like that. Our side is a little bit more t laid back and, you know, we were trying to figure out how can we bring this together where, you know, it kind of reflects both of us. And uh, I feel like um, we, we came um, upon some really great colorways and this was the, the final choice and we just really enjoyed it. Okay, well, it really is a great hybrid. <laughs> and uh, like uh, Commissioner Martinez, I also would like to be present. So please let us know when the, when the big show happens, the grand opening. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I also would like to echo the other commissioners. The design is really beautiful. Um, and the color, the color choice is also very um, sophisticated. I guess the question that I have is around, you know, working with, you know, colors that are maybe not traditionally used on a basketball court. Um, could you talk to us a bit about the life expectancy? Uh, I know in your proposal, you talked about it being about five to 10 years, but, you know, using like materials that maybe are not, or colors that maybe are not typically used on basketball courts. Yeah, maybe just talk to us a bit about the life expectancy and what, what you think about the maintenance plan for um, this really beautiful design that you've put together. Absolutely. Um, I know that's a huge question, especially, you know, something that's a hardscape. Um, so we are using Sportmaster, um, which is made specifically for outdoor athletic courts. Um, and this is also what the city uses for all of their standard courts. Um, it's just different colors. Great. Um, and um, I'm very confident in uh, the the life expectancy I think it'll ex ex will surely exceed five years. Um, Ten is cross we're crossing our fingers, but um, the previous court that I had done in Belsuver, which actually had some lighter colors in it, which was why in this court I think we intentionally made choices that did not include like those lighter like yellows and things like that. Um, that was done in 2019 and it still is holding up very well. Um, and so, I, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident about this. And also, you know, Dan from, from Project Backboard, who's gonna be leading the installation, this is his bread and butter. Um, so we feel really good about, we feel really good about that. And the, the maintenance should be very low um, up until, you know, that contract review um, that will be, you know, keeping an eye on it, taking a look and seeing if there's any repairs that need to be made. And yeah. commissioners, just, just to note that um, what she's referencing there is our recommendation for limited term art, um, such as this, uh, where we'd recommend the approval be for, mm -hmm. say, five years. Um, that's, you know, the time that the city would be allowing this mural to um, be on city property. And at that time we can do a review and if it 
has been maintained and is in good condition and has been well received, then we extend that. Yes, and, and that, that I think um, definitely makes sense um, as a path forward for this. Um, so are there any other questions from commissioners? I was just going to add one more thing that um, we we definitely have been in contact with DPW like throughout this process. And we know that this is um, one of the standard courts that they typically um, review for resurfacing and, and those kinds of maintenance plans um, about every 10 years. So in the event that um, in 10 years we feel, you know, it does need to be redone, it should already kind of be in the system for that. Perfect. So I am also in accordance with the city's um, proposal to recommend approval for a five-year period with then an opportunity for extension given um, just with re review at that time around the maintenance, et cetera, as well. Um, so that is what I am in favor of. Um, any thoughts from other commissioners? No, I mean, I agree. I think a five-year term is practical for something that, that gets that much friction and ground usage with such vibrancy underfoot. No comments from Commissioner Bethia. Okay, so with that, can we have a, um, I guess I will put forward the motion for the N approval with a um, for a five for, for a five year period with extension then um, being given at that time if the artwork has been adequately maintained during that term. I will second that motion to approve. All right, roll call for that motion. Awuna? Aye. Bethia? Aye. Martinez? Aye. Thank you. The project is approved. We are very excited for this artwork to be joining our community. Please keep us keep us posted around the unveiling dates and other ways that we can be involved and be of support. Um, we're really excited for the work. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. So next we're hearing an action. We have Arlington Recreation Center mural. And Kara, you should be joining as a panelist. Do uh, you need others to be promoted as well? Yes, if you could promote um, Kristen Raup, that would be great. All right. She's joining as a panelist, so you can um, begin your brief intro when you're ready. Okay. Um, yep. My name is Kara Jetty, and I've been on the board of the oh, sorry Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association um, since 2013. Um, for the last three years or so, the Slopes Association has been working um, with the Arlington Rec Center, with Friends of Southside Park, with um, all of our uh, neighbors and friends um, to work on putting a mural on the side of the Arlington Rec Center. Um, I showed this slide so you can kind of place where this is in the neighborhood and um, in relation to Southside Park. So Southside Park is that giant green blob in the middle of um, the Southside Slopes neighborhood. Uh, it kind of defies the neighborhood. We have trails across it that uh, Friends of Southside Park has worked to connect. And the Arlington Rec Center sits um, right at the top of it. There's a trail, I guess Google doesn't know about it yet, but we're working to highlight it, um, To that connects straight from behind the Arlington Rec Center and you know brings you into the whole trail network. Um, the main entrance to Southside Park though is um, basically from the Southside Flats at 21st Street coming into the park. And we wanted to um, really highlight that there are multiple ways, especially from the Hilltop neighborhoods to get into this park. Um, 
yeah, here we go. Here's the, uh, so right now, um, the South, Friends of Southside Park has worked with the city to put in signage, um, and you can see a very small sign um, at the top of the stairs there. Um, but what we want to do is create a much larger mural to make this area more welcoming and inviting to anyone walking by or, you know, visiting the recreation center or um, anything like that. Um, so we've been working on these designs for uh, throughout 2023. Um, we've received a lot of community feedback. Oh, you can progress, sorry. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, the we started at the beginning of 2023 with an online um, survey where we tried to get um, a lot of feedback from people um, in the neighborhood. We received feedback from residents of Arlington, from residents of Southside Slopes, from residents of the Southside Flats, from uh, people who work at the rec center. And we felt like we got a wide range of input there. Um, and we also um, got a lot of feedback and things that people wanted represented. So we tried to incorporate a lot of these different um, ideas into the mural. Um, including, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can see some of the design um, rounds here. The top right one, I think, is the one that we submitted to um, the Public Art Commission back in November, and we did receive a lot of feedback on that. Um, I did want to highlight some of the changes that we made. We added um, text to that sign, the brown sign, to say that it's going into Southside Park. We... Uh, added more detail to the figures so that they would um, more represent and be inclusive of everybody in the area. Uh, we updated the incline itself, um, added the word St. Clair incline on it because that was where the St. Clair incline ran. Was uh, It actually uh, went right through where this mural path will be and um, it ran till I think 1943 or 35 or something. Um, and so that was, and that was another you know, piece that was really important to the neighbors to um, incorporate into that. Um, yeah, so we tried to um, take uh, feedback into account, but we also, uh, most of the feedback that we got that was positive was about it being such a whimsical and fun mural that's engaging. Um, and we also really wanted to keep um, kind of these cityscape urban aspects of this mural. Um, if you're at Southside Park, you will see um, airplanes flying over all the time. And there's many great views of the city if you're walking around, especially right now before the leaves have come in. Um, and we really wanted to highlight those things. Um, and finally, um, I just really wanted to, uh, we're really, the Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association is really happy to be supporting um, Friends of Southside Park and all the work that they've done. Um, they've been they were created almost 10 years ago and they've uh, built most of the trails or helped build most of the trails working with land force in the park. And they, um, they hope have planted over a thousand trees in the last decade. They uh, host an annual summer event called goat fest. And we're really hoping that this mural will be live um, or at least in progress for this summer's goat fest in July. And yeah, as you can see, here's the uh, uh, idea of, of how the mural um, would lay out when you're looking at it from the street um, and just be a little more uh, inviting and welcoming and encourage people to, to walk down that trail and enter the park. Is that all for your presentation? I'll just add a, a little bit more. I'm Kristen Raub. I'm also a board member of the Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association, working with CARE on this project. Uh, sitting beside me is Roberto Maxwell, who is the mural artist who will be working on this, has come up with these preliminary designs. Um, you know, he can introduce himself um, a little bit, but I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a really, um, this project has been going on for a while and we put a lot of thought into it and had a lot of, um, as Kara said, input from from neighbors um, and, and other constituencies uh, that live in and around and are going to be seeing this um, all, the, uh, you know, every day or, or often in the neighborhood. And I just uh, I 
think it's going to be a great sort of showpiece um, for the hilltop and, you know, getting people into the park and this being so whimsical um, was really something we thought hard about and also trying to engage young people to get into the park. Um, so, you know, with the little, the, the fox in the corner, um, in the little box, he's, he's like a, he's a selfie partner. Um, so we hope that a lot of folks will, you know, take pictures and, and, you know, enjoy their day, start their day in the park from here. Um, Roberto. Um, Hello, my name is Roberto Maxwell, local tattoo artist and mural artist. I've done a few murals here on the north side and in the Hill District, actually. Uh, the latest one we've done was in, uh, on 10th Street on the side of a garage down there. But i um, been here quite a while, and the park is friendly to me, and that was one of the instruments that helped me design this, this mural. It's exactly what I was spoken about earlier. is like you can go up there, and these, these are the views that you can see, and you can imagine if you've been up to the park looking down and it has the nickname of Jurassic Park. And if you've ever been up there, you can see why. And, I mean, the animals and the wildlife that you see walking through the trail are all represented in some of this stuff. And my idea is keeping it young and fresh because, again, it's a recreation center and we want the youth to come and, and take, take pride in this neighborhood. And, and they're the future. So they're the ones who are going to be using this well into the future. So we want to engage them now and get them enjoying what is what is available. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So are there any, is there any public comment for this project? Uh, if anyone has any public comment, please use the raise hand function now. I do not see any currently, and there was no one pre-registered. Okay, so we will move on to commissioner comments and comment discussion. This is Commissioner Bafia. I just wanted to say that I, I, I think the, the mural is wonderful and whimsical, <laughs> and thanks for the very good explanation of the critters because I was trying to figure out what is a goat that was throwing me. So I appreciated it. You said, oh, because they're doing this goat festival. And then you explained the Jurassic Park thing with the, you know, with the dinosaurs. So that was very helpful. So my only question uh, or suggestion to you might be, and it has nothing to do with that, whether this is approved or not, is that it would be great if that wonderful story that you told um, is somewhere available. I don't know if your councilman or on his website with a picture of the mural, because I think that's it's just really clever to know how you guys came up, you know, came up with that really interesting concept of seeing dinosaurs and bunnies and goats together. So it's it really is kind of a cool story. And I'd like to see you, you know, promote that a little bit. But great design. Thank you. The recreation centers that are owned and operated by the city of Pittsburgh have all different demographics that any given recreation center season hosts more of. Several of them are much more inclined and have a higher rate of senior usage. Some of them are more oriented to middle school youth and then some do have an early care specialty. Do you know the primary age target that the Arlington Recreation Center serves? Um, they get a lot of uh, third through fifth graders through their after school program um, with Arlington. And right now, actually, because um, the Ormsby Rec Recreation Center is closed, uh, they're also getting a lot of um, the programming from Ormsby um, up there as well. Um, so uh, they also do pickleball in the evenings. Um, and that's more of an older crowd. But yeah, they I, I would say that their primary um, audience is uh, youth. Okay, that's helpful to know, and it would be it would it would be of an assurance to me that the recreation center, uh, a part of the leadership of the recreation center, also is part of. I'm sure they are, but just so it's named and said for the record that they are part of this decision making process because a mural of this nature 
is so contained to such an ex a, a specific age bracket of young children that I would not want it to be a detriment if the recreation center did want to grow a teen market. Uh, certainly, we have been in talks with um, Monique Williams, who's the director of the Arlington Rec Center, and she's seen all the designs um, throughout the process. Um, she she uh, was one of the people that was um, pushing for, you know, a sports component in there. So that's what the, the basketball court um, in the corner there and um, was, uh, yeah, prompted by by her input. Um, I guess um, one question I had was, you know, there was, you know, quite a bit of feedback that was given in preliminary review um, around certain suggestions. So it seems like, you know, certain suggestions were taken, um, but other ones were not. Like, for example, the box around the fox, um, which I know you all are framing it as a... Um, a component to invite people for selfies, but it really just kind of disconnects the composition. Um, so that was offered in preliminary review, um, but was not taken into account. Um, there were also questions around, um, you know, I, I think we've given, you've provided us a bit more context now around, you know, why were there dinosaurs chosen in the composition over living animals? I think that might've been I think better to, I think it would have been helpful to kind of provide some context because I think even there was questions around like, why a goat? Um, I think that was also not really clear. I think you all have answered that, those questions a bit more. Um, but yeah, kind of curious around why some of the feedback around like the, the box around the fox was not taken into account. There was also feedback around potentially refining the design around the cityscape. Um, the foliage, for example, like there are local trees that are there. We don't really get any sense of what the local character is of the actual trees and nature that are available locally in that area. Um, so I, I think the big aspect of the feedback was around how to make this a mural that is really unique to the specific location and one that is not just a generic mural that you could see anywhere. Right. Um, by highlighting local animal species really specifically, um, really refining some of the details. You think even, for example, the leaves in the on the trees could have been refined. So you could be like, oh, it's this specific type of tree. So I'm just curious why certain parts of the feedback were not taken into account. Um, I think another question around the design that I have is that the aspect ratio of the wall that you provided does not actually match the aspect ratio of the design. Um, so you have an aspect ratio that's 12 feet tall by 60 feet long. Your actual design is does not have that aspect ratio. So it actually it almost it almost chop off about half of the design in the actual implementation. So there's inconsistencies there that um, do kind of raise concerns or questions around what the final design actually would look like, um, particularly with the aspect ratio that is for the site. And it's like, oh, why not the full wall, which would actually match the aspect ratio, would have much more visual impact. So just wanted to kind of pose those questions to you all to get your feedback around why the initial preliminary, some of the preliminary review notes were not taken into account, thoughts around the aspect ratio, and um, potentially the potential to actually use the full um, wall as well. Um, I'll speak to some of it and Kara, please chime in. Um, so I'll talk about the 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 um, border around the the fox. Um, that was actually designed so that there there's an existing set of doors there. So yeah if we had could paint over that it was it was kind of to demark that i i think um and if there you know it'll be a different sort of surface and so you know do we blend it into the whole design or do we you know just use it as a frame um so that was i think where the where the 
thought was around that. I don't know if you. Yeah, well, I, the basic idea of putting the frame around that was to delineate the space that was for the doors. So we didn't know if we had an okay to paint over the doors. Are they used or not? So that's what that came about. So we figure it would be a good spot for a selfie spot. Yeah, it was kind of like a weird jut out into the the rest of the space, the rest of the design, and we wanted to get it as close to the street, the sidewalk as as possible. Um, as far as the aspect ratio, um, I think you know the thought was that you know we weren't again with the structure pieces that are closer to you can see them in the in the raw like before pictures. Um, where there's a grate over a, a window. Um, there's there's some different types of materials there. Um, so the original thought was to sort of smush it, you know, away from that, but uh and and so the aspect ratio would be a little bit closer to what the design is. But also I think um, Roberta would probably agree that, you know, one of the things was, you know, using greenery and some of the other things that are within the design could sort of fill that out, I guess. And I mean, another thing is the location of the site. It can be done the whole building, but it's like, oh, I would say it's about treacherous it. as far as getting scaffolding and the equipment to get up that high, putting people at risk climbing up the side of the building is one thing that I, I, I had an issue with. We had that issue with some of the other murals that I've done on the north side where it was like almost impossible to get scaffolding in because it was dirt. And then you're on the scaffolding and it starts sinking in and you run the risk of somebody getting injured. Yeah. So. Uh, and Commissioner, right. is, this might be a good time. Uh, two things, actually. One of them being that... Uh, as we consider any mural to be limited term art per our collection management policy, we do recommend the same uh, kind of, you know, quote unquote trial period or uh, initial period of approval for um, murals placed on the wall. They, they don't receive the same kind of degradation, um, but it is an opportunity to see if the mural weathers, if it's received uh well if there's any other issues um so that is just something that may be a factor um in your review uh the other thing that i would like to just put on the record i don't have um dpw support noted for this so i would i would ask if uh chip um can provide uh verbal support from dpw for this project Yes, absolutely. Um, and we did our due diligence just to make sure that the wall was in good condition. Um, and so we actually had someone from our construction division as well as one of our painters take a look. And um, as long as an exterior paint is used as the backdrop, then um, I think we're all good to go. But yes, certainly have our approval. Could you also... From... Oh, pardon. Excuse me, this is Commissioner Martinez. Chip, when you were on site, did you happen to note if a scissor lift or a cherry picker would be able to be on site to get above the current 10, 10 foot marker? Um, we we weren't looking at it, so I can't say definitively, um, but we can certainly uh, coordinate. Um, we can get back, we, we can get a definitive answer on on that but we we get lifts into pretty tight spaces and i don't think mm -hmm. it'll be an issue but i don't know that they like specifically looked at the the grounds right in front of the wall to to confirm that so i'd have to follow up there i understand it's a lift would be a, a much safer option than scaffolding yeah definitely we, we i agree could we also pull up the picture of the the wall please I know there's multiple surfaces as well with like the the metal there. I saw there was also some lighting fixtures as well. So I think there's a lot of um so that's the um could you go to the one the as the site is now, please? Yeah. So I think for example, like there's the there's the doors there, um, there's the the gray brick. This seems like there's also some surf some surfacing that's been done in that kind of 
lighter gray area. So could you also all also pardon? It was a graffiti cover cover up with paint. I see. Done by DPW. I would I imagine. See. I see. So I guess could you also also speak to? I mean, there's just a lot of different pieces, also different surfaces here. Um, that's also just kind of raising questions of actually, what is it actually going to look like in the space? You know, so could you also also speak to that aspect of the installation and thoughts around navigating that um, as you would implement a mural? Um, or were you going to do some type of surfacing on top of it to make it a uniform surface? Um, I've done other murals at other locations. And they've had like pipes and drains and, and vents and stuff. And if you follow your lines and your perspective, you can make it so when you look at it, they disappear into the painting. Okay. So because the only thing, I mean, we could frame it up. If you see where that large vent is about above the grate, that's the window. It's, yeah, there's a vent up there. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah. we can do some. I mean, it depends on how far we go. We could do it at the edge of that and bring it all the way down to the end, and it would stay within the, the larger scale of the dimensions that 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 um that the drawing is. We can also extend it over, and it'll take a little bit more finessing and work, but we can blend the vents in and the grates in so it becomes part of the painting. My only problem is there's a window on the other side of the grate, and would they have a problem painting, you know, if paint gets on the window, or how however we want to do it so we don't obscure the window is what I'm saying. Or could an option be to start to the right of that, Yes. Um, the no, sorry. To the, you know how there's that doorway with like yes. the that, the that, purple. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Could you start to the right of that? And to the then, right of the double doors. Yes, to the right of the yeah. double doors, and actually go higher. Yeah. What actually would be what I am curious about, um, and mm. I guess I'm I'm curious, you know. I know there's multiple different paths forward for the project. Um, for me, kind of personally, in terms of actually kind of ensuring the, like the, the getting the highest visible, visible, visible impact, I would be curious um, to potentially think about a continuance to have one month for you all to actually also put together a feasibility to see if, okay, what if we actually started the per, the mural on this side with our scale of our budget, et cetera, too, could we actually make it a larger scale piece that has much more vis, um, um, visual impact? Um, could we use a lift? I mean, so I think there's some questions there that I would be really interested to see, to see if there was some alternatives for this proposal that might also elevate it um, as a whole. Um, so I think that's something that I'm curious about as a commissioner um, to potentially offer a continuance for a month to also kind of scope out that as another option for the pork so we can kind of kind of weigh some pros and cons between the um, potential options with the kind of the materiality that exists here, but trying to make sure that it ends up being the, the of the highest quality possible. That's something that I'm curious about. Commissioners also potentially might feel about that as well. I would agree with that, Mikhail. And then, you know, I, I see no on paper or in-person objection to the overall aesthetic of it, and nor is it my position to truly make a judgment of that nature, but I would feel more comfortable if I did see a letter of support from the recreation center itself um, with a caution that as an external party, it does read as an childcare illustration. 
And that is not a critique of the work. It is simply a reading of the of the piece and of the competition of composition, excuse me. And if that is part of the intentionality, then so be it. I just want it to be named and for us to be intentional that that is the aesthetic approach that you want to take. Uh, this is Commissioner Bethia. Uh, Mikhail, um, Commissioner Una, I'm curious as to whether you're mentioning and the change of the uh, the spacing for the mural and the height in the mural and moving it up. Um, does that also entail rethinking the fox in the box situation? Because that's specifically a site piece. Yeah. And it sounds like that you've mentioned with trees and some other things that you're thinking there could be more detail. So is this sort of a little bit of an overhaul or are we just more concerned about it lifting higher is my question. So I think definitely the primary concern, the primary concern is definitely pulling it over, increasing the scale of the work. I think given that the box was chosen to fade into the the double doors, but if we're avoiding the double doors, I think that does open up the opportunity to remove the box and actually just in include that in the rest of the foliage and include it in the rest of the composition. So I think that would be something that I would um, really encourage for for that. I think the other elements, um, I think we've offered we've offered them as suggestions, but I think as Commissioner Martinez said, um, if you all do um, could provide a letter of support from the Recreation Center um, for um, of them, you know, stating their support for the design and its um, particular emphasis on youth, I think we would I would we would be comfortable moving forward with that. But I think removing the box now that we're not kind of stuck with the double doors would be a request as well. Commissioners, I Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, I was asked to promote another uh, project partner, um, which is Joshua. Um, Joshua, if you can introduce yourself for the record, uh, I think he wanted to respond to some of the, some of the comments. Hello, and sorry, I am, uh, sorry, I was gonna try to turn on my video here. Um, so, hi, my name is Joshua Roland. I am uh, with the Office of Management and Budget um, here in the city. Uh, we are actually working with Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association um, and uh, City Council Member Charlin's office to, um, Oh, there it goes. <laughs> um, uh, with a uh, city grant um, to be able to uh, fund uh, this program. Um, unfortunately, uh, I am still um, understanding the entire process uh, for the um, review, the art review for this mural, but um, we're sort of in a uh, bind for the limits for when this contract, when this grant can be spent. Um, we were uh, working with the organization to, to hopefully have everything uh, spent down um, in the summer. So we were looking at a timeline of uh, early June um, for uh, the completion and drawdown of these funds. Um, otherwise, uh, we're kind of at the limit of um, when HUD would be looking to get this money back. Um, sorry, I know I'm coming in with a lot right now. I came in a little bit late onto this meeting, but um, I just wanted to highlight that uh, the source of funding um, for this mural um, will be uh, hitting a deadline soon in the summer. Um, and so we wanted to see if there was any opportunity to um, move forward uh, or, or, or be able to kind of review the uh, the mural um, in a way that uh, it doesn't have to wait for another month for approval. I understand that you all have your own process, um, but I just wanted to bring that into the conversation as well. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I would just add that, you know, <laughs> with the continuance, we would make a final decision during our next month's hearing, which would be um, 
towards the end of towards the end of April, which would provide sufficient time for the fund for the work to be implemented, um, and for there to be um, the funds to be spent down by June. So that should not be a concern. I have a question for you though, Joshua. By way of the process, was it clear to you that a continuance or a denial could have taken place during this meeting? That's important for us to understand as a matter of operating. Um, I think from our end, uh, we were not fully aware of all of the different um, steps that were kind of started at the beginning of the of the project. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think uh, we were, as we sort of understood more about um, the different approvals that were uh, would need to happen um, to make this mural possible, mm -hmm. um, we definitely uh, began engaging more with um, city planning, specifically with Tony, uh, to make sure that um, everything was in line and and uh, you know all the, and we as the city were. Um, uh, helping this forward as, as best as we could um, so that it was that there wasn't any um, delays uh, since we wanted to make sure that um, this didn't jeopardize the grant that we received. Um, so we weren't fully aware of uh, of the process. I know it's been a, a big learning um, experience for myself. Um, I think uh, had we sort of started everything earlier, I think maybe we would have suggested a a different pot of funding that didn't have um, the same time restraints that this one uh, does. I understand, and you, and you do have my empathy, um, but I do agree with Mikhail uh, that a continuance is in order and that in a month's time, you would still have time to spend down the funding. Yeah, and also, um, Josh, just as like a bit, also a bit of background on the project in case you were not aware, this project was submitted for preliminary review in November of 2023, which is when we provided feedback at that time. Um, the applicants then have opportunities to proceed to hearing and action. Um, they had an opportunity to do so in the January hearing, in the February hearing. So it was selected to do move forward with the March hearing, um, which that's that that's a a choice done by applicants around when they want to move forward to hearing and action, but we did provide initial feedback in November. Yeah, and I just want to follow up with that. There's obviously a lot of moving pieces in this. Um, for us, one of the, uh, I mean, there's, uh, I think uh, maybe Josh isn't aware, but this also, I guess, needs to go through council. Um, to be approved after uh, it's approved for our commission. So there are still more steps after this. Um, and, you know, we're, uh, like I said, uh, Kristen and I are, you know, we're on an all volunteer board. We're working um, through this process and thankfully have had, um, you know, a lot of uh, help from the counselor's office to help this along as well. Um, but yeah, one of the, one of the holdups was um, getting a uh, in touch with uh, a DPW and making sure, uh, thankfully, um, Councilman Charlin's office was able to um, progress that for us. But there was um, that was our that was our main delay in January. Is the continuance on the fund itself a possibility? Um, so the the grant funding that we received is is part of uh, the community development block grant. It's it's an annual allocation that actually is um, coming from 2017 money. So the money is actually quite old and it's been reprogrammed for this purpose. Um, it wasn't always assigned for this mural, uh, but that uh, that deadline is is very fixed. It's it's like in the federal rules for when funding has to get spent down. So we would not be able to um, extend this. Uh, we would, our office would um, most likely then try to find uh, another use for this money just so that HUD didn't take it um, from us uh, sort of and jeopardize like maybe future allocations. Um, it's, it's for a small amount, but we just don't want to uh, relative to the larger grant, but um, we just don't want to jeopardize having HUD take that money away. Do you know the percentage of the funds for the overall project that is in question? Uh, so it's the our contract with um, 
with Southside Slopes is for $10,000. 5,000 of that is uh, coming from this older pot of money that needs to get spent down by the summer. Okay, so it's 50% of the overall. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay, uh, this is Commissioner uh, Bethia. Josh, I, I, I guess I, I somewhat concur with um, uh, Commissioner Martinez. I think you should still take a stand at getting them to move it. Um, I do know that there have, I've worked with lots of different grants, foundations, and, you know, governmental money funds, and they understand post-COVID that things just don't move as quickly, and they can be, they do have some, some leverage on, on shifting things to the left and the right, so I wouldn't, even though, even if they told you no, I would still go back and tell them that you had this, you know, hearing with the commission, and what happened, and, and, and ask again. Now that you have something more specific to say, this is why it happened and this is why we needed to uh, extend. So I'd take another shot at it. And there are also, with it being 50% of the funds, there are, you know, with us having a final decision end of April, there are ways that you could, for example, if you were to, if, if a, a lift rental was something that was going to be needed, you could, for example, <laughs> For you like rent the rent the the lift rental with the five thousand. So I think there are creative ways you can you all could still make use of the funds with the needed deadline. I agreed as with the with the understanding that you know it, and I'm not telling you how to run your business, but as a recommendation to ensure that your operating budget throughout implementation till the end of the budget lifespan be completed and understood among your stakeholders so that you don't have additional delays and decision-making processes once you do receive approval. Okay, so with that, I would like to make a motion for a continuance, um, specifically to provide a design for that area to the right of the double doors, seeing if within the scope of your budget, how tall you all could make it. Could you all use a lift? So I think kind of just scoping out that as an option for the work, providing us some new renderings in that space. Um, and then we did talk about the detail around the the Fox, and now that you're not limited by that composition element with the double doors, including the Fox more seamlessly, removing that box around it, including it into the composition as a whole. Um, and then as Commissioner Martinez mentioned, um, also including a letter of support from the Recreational Center as well. I would second the motion for a continuance. Uh, roll call for that motion. Um, Awuna? Aye. Bithia? Aye. Martinez? Aye. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you all with um, some updated materials during our next, our next month's hearing. Okay. Thank you so much for all the feedback. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So thank you, commissioners. So to conclude today's meeting agenda, do we have a director's report? There is not one. Okay. So the Public Art Commission meeting is adjourned at 3.19 PM. Thank you. Bye all. So I think before we start the Civic Design Committee meeting, this one, thank you for joining. Uh, a little bit about the Learning Lab. Uh, the cameras is the owl in the room. It tries to track the absence of movement. It focuses on the screen because it sees movement. Is what it is. Uh, the mics are the blue dots on the ceiling. Um, so when we're speaking, try to speak, I think, towards the middle of the room or that. Lights less towards the screen, uh, waters behind us. Uh, if in need of evacuation, uh, the meetup point it is at is at PAZ for Sec Park. So that's where we meet up to do a head count, make sure that we're all. Um, and with that, way to begin.
Go ahead. I was like, I'm gonna do water. And and before we get started, I just want to thank you all for showing up and not leaving me. Why are you I thought I was gonna be over here, right. and everybody else was gonna be in their offices and at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's no fun. Right. right. <laughs> so I appreciate yeah. it. You made me feel comfortable. I was, I was, I was the outlier for a second. <laughs> we just weren't here as a early issue, right? And yeah, we, I mean, they were going to talk a little bit before. Yeah, no, yeah. since we have been in person for Planning Commission and Historic Review Commission uh -huh. and Zoning Board of Adjustment, actually, I think for like the last of the, this commission notwithstanding, there's been much more applicants in person there and is. public comment in person than we expected. But... Okay. Do we have to wait for, are we waiting on like DPW or anybody else? Good. Or are we sorry, do you know me or anybody? Um, do you have a seated permits? Well, we did have a message from Director of Domi, that there's a meeting conflict, but we do have a letter of support um, from the right here about me. Be right back. <laughs> We're reviewing the, the bridge. Yeah. The bridge. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the other ones were just yeah. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so we're live on YouTube, so I think oh, whenever we will wait like to begin and okay. do roll call on So is the YouTube stream seeing your screen or seeing the owl? The owl. Yeah. We believe so. <laughs> we believe so. It <laughs> wasn't an event, so. <laughs> well, I, I, I could go back and watch the YouTube streams mm -hmm. and not sure why, but sometimes when we're sharing our screen, yeah. we don't always see. Like, right. We'll see the applicants if they're on Zoom, but we don't always see the in meeting mm -hmm. camera. Um must be really delayed because uh, and so we're workshopping that but sure. you know, since this is a short term yeah. solution, we're just happy that it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. understood. I was just yeah. curious. Yeah. Well we've been testing the the owl in many different locations because there is a camera here mm -hmm. uh but it cuts off um, on the edges because huh. the projectors are there. Mm -hmm. and so we try to dual the panorama plus the owl, and I think that's where the YouTube was messing up because it wasn't sure where to focus. Um, and we've tried, you know, the pano view, and I think we're on the tracking view at the yeah. moment. But, cool. but so far, like the, we haven't had issues with the court reporter. Um, Actually, are we missing the court report? We're missing the court report, so we can't start. So we need to get the court. Did we fail to alert the court report about the 4 p.m. switch? I think. Yeah. No. Okay. So let's pause it. So for us to. Uh, Have the court reporter rejoin.
I think they were just waiting for the oh. Yeah. Like a physical person. So that I thought it was like um no. like a note <laughs> Up. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you so much.
sound check for the court reporter. Um, you can reply in chat if your mic isn't working. reporter verified that she can hear. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I called the order, uh, I called to order the meeting of the Civic Design Committee on March 27th, 2024 at 3.30. Uh, Roll call, please. Ziegler? Present. Abdullah? Present. Carver? Present. Winston? Present. And do not have DPW or DOMI representatives present. All right. Uh, approval of the commission minute, minutes. Does any commissioner have any comments on last month's meeting? No comments. No comments. And we are uh, doing approval for both the January 2024 commission hearing minutes and the annual meeting of that same month. I need, I need a second or? I need a motion. May I have a motion? Uh, I'll motion to approve. A second. Okay. Uh, roll call for that approval. Ziegler? Aye. Abdullah? Aye. Carver? Aye. Winston? Aye. Okay. Uh, do we have any correspondence? Uh, one item of correspondence was sent to you, which was the DOMI support letter for the Fisher Bridge renovation project. Uh, and do we have any public comment? Uh, no public comment. Um, the first, uh, today we have one project, and that is the Fisher, Fisher Bridge. The applicant is um, Susan McCollum from LGA Partners. Susan, I have you promoted. Uh, do you need others to join you as well? You should be able to unmute. John Evans is going to give the presentation. Okay. All right, you're both here. Should you can uh, begin when you're ready. Okay, great. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. So we're here today to present um, the renovation of the Fisher Hall Bridge at Duquesne University. Um, just not sure here. I'm trying to make sure I can see it. So um, the Fisher Bridge is sort of the first of the two bridges, um, pedestrian bridges. If you're coming from downtown. Um, you can see the location here, um, located just next to the entrance to the Armstrong Tunnel, um, and then the Sklar Pedestrian Bridge um, at the other end if you go further up Forbes Avenue. Um, the sort of basic idea is that these two bridges really form a gateway to Duquesne's campus um, for people driving or walking along Forbes Avenue, um, and obviously facilitate pedestrian traffic um, from above. The main goal of this project is to take the Fisher Hall Bridge, which was built now um, just over 20 years ago, and sort of bring it up to the same level of design as well as maintenance as the Sklar Bridge, which is a much newer construction. Next slide. You can see here a couple aerial views that show uh, the Fisher Bridge in context. Um, both relating to how you see up Forbes Avenue to the other Sklar Bridge, as well as to the downtown. Um, obviously, you can see the pyramidal roofs both downtown and at the parking garage side of the Sklar Bridge, which formed some of the precedent and kind of tied together the design as we thought about the entrance to the Fisher Hall Bridge. Next slide, please. Um, here you can see the existing condition. Um, this is taken from uh, the top of the bluff, um, McAnulty Drive. Um, this is the entrance to the sixth floor of Fisher Hall. That you can see at the other end of the bridge, um, and you can see the current uh, brick entrance, which was built at the same time as the pedestrian bridge. Next slide. 
And this shows our proposed design. Um, so you can see keeping you know, some of the structure in place and the general floor plan of that entry point, but redoing the roof, um, redoing the piers, bringing in a little bit more natural light, and then upgrading the bridge itself to the same level of finish colors as the Sklar Bridge. Um, you can see the steel arch. Um, I know this was one of the questions we received. This is, in the case of this bridge, just a decorative element, um, but we're doing this with real structural steel. The idea is not for this to be some kind of flimsy applique, but a real part of the bridge and an integral portion of it, but it is not, in this case, actually structural. Next slide. And then um, finally here, you can see a view showing um, the two bridges in their context, looking up from Forbes Avenue. This is obviously a rendering of our proposed finish. Um, you can see the lower portion of this bridge, the walkway has a greater slope. There's also a pipe run that extends um, across below the bridge. And so that portion needs to remain opaque, but we're using a metal cladding with similar finish to the adjacent bridge. And then where we can above, um, to in curtain wall to bring in a little more natural light and, and that look of openness. That's it. <laughs> Happy to kind of field any questions or talk about any specific design issues if there are questions. Is there any uh, public comment for this project? Uh, there is not. For comments and discussion. I think my, my questions were answered in the um, preliminary response. So I don't have any additional questions. Uh, John, this is uh, Commissioner Carver here. Um, one of my questions was about the projecting tubes, and you did clarify that a bit. Will those be capped, uh, or will they have the exposed end? Like uh, um, tube steel. They're actually a wide flange. It's an eye section. Um, so there is an, okay. a, a hollow portion that would need to be capped or closed off. I see. Okay. I It looked like two. Hello. Yeah, Hello. These, these guys here okay. are poking out. All right. I have a question. Uh, this is Commissioner Abdullah. Uh, once uh, the, I guess the current existing uh, Skyway or Rock Bridge uh, is um, taken down, all right, so will they I restrict traffic and things of that nature? How does that how does that process look? The deconstruction of the bridge. Yeah, we're still um, working to make a final contractor selection for this, but. We're anticipating most likely two road closures at a minimum. Um, one would be to erect a scaffold. Um, just to be clear, you know, all the structure of the existing bridge is staying in place, um, portions, so it's not, you know, an entire bridge coming down. Um, the two closures would most likely to be to build a scaffold with some containment so that they can do the paint removal and all of that safely above Forbes Avenue. And then an, at least a second closure to remove that scaffold. Um, there may also be an additional closure required to install with a crane, the arched um, steel pieces. Um, that's something we're still trying to figure out how that'll coordinate with the other closures. Um, we know that those will have to occur over the weekends um, to make sure again, you know, with events and disruption on Forbes app, but that's something that'll be coordinated with Domi um, to make sure that we're doing that and everything's scheduled and, and kind of approved. And uh, I have one other question too. Um, so, and how how will I guess pedestrians? How will they be rerouted? Um, what's the alternative route? And I guess I'm assuming that whatever the alternative is as well, it'll be accessible uh, for you know people with disabilities. Yeah. For the bridge access. Or, well, I mean, I, if that, if I assume they're not going to be walking across there anymore, right? Deconstruction and that while they're doing the renovation. So in the interim, what's the alternative uh, right. path to reroute people? Like, where's the detour path at? 
So that's something, again, that'll be worked out with the selected contractor in details. Um, a lot of it will be done with signage, obviously, where to direct people. Um, before this bridge was constructed, you know, one of the reasons it was built was to avoid having traffic crossing Forbes Avenue, pedestrian traffic. Um, the goal is to limit the, the actual closure for pedestrians mm -hmm. to the summer. So between graduation and um, classes starting again in August, obviously the scaffold may be constructed before that and they extend afterwards. But that should limit the disruption, um, you know, the amount of pedestrian traffic that needs to be rerouted to other locations. Thank you. Um, I have one final question. Um, there was a presentation to the DRP uh, in March. Just wanted to know if there were any additional comments that came uh, from the RCOs regarding the project. I don't believe we had, you know, specific direction. I think we had really good conversations with each of the RCOs and they were all generally very supportive of it. Um, a lot of questions, but nothing that you know guided or changed the direction of the project. Any other questions? Questions. All right. Um, may I have a motion to approve? I'll motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. okay. Roll call for that motion. Ziegler. Yes. Abdullah. Aye. Farber? Aye. Kingston? Aye. Um, last item is do we have a director's report? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Um, not a report, but a discussion. Uh, so, I, you, if you recall in the rules, of, rules and procedures um, for projects that go to another commission um, review by PACD is not required right so if planning commission or historic historic review commission is required then PACD review and approval is not required um kind of want to bring up discussion to see if there's uh some potential modifications that we can make in the future uh to one that you know, acknowledge that we do have, you know, um, commissioners that make a contribution um, for projects that would go to HRC or potential planning commission. Um, so perhaps, you know, not, you know, bringing that project in for hearing and action, but perhaps proposing like courtesy, mm -hmm. those projects go through courtesy review so that your comments uh, can then be, you know, taken in and provided as a report um, to those other commissions to, you know, from your roles, the Civic Design Commission. So, you know, we don't have any projects like that at the moment, but I think just, you know, in the future, if something does come that come in that would be subject to HRC or some other commission, I think it would, um, you know, nice to hear your voices heard in that capacity from um, other commissioners. So just want to kind of bring that this discussion, maybe a slight modification to the rules and procedures that we can bring back at a later date, but you know, just begin to, I don't know, like to open up the floor to hear your thoughts. I mean, that, to me, that sounds feasible. Um, you know, just my general thoughts. I mean, it doesn't sound like a, a major or a huge change. And um, I mean, it sounds like it would be very supportive of the overall process in order to get, you know, have a project go through, um, you know, or move through um, um, the necessary steps to get it to come to fruition. Yeah, I think a preliminary review probably makes a lot of sense. We don't want to overburden a project, right? To have to um, uh, go through multiple commission reviews. So uh, something preliminary and kind of off the record makes a lot of sense to me. I concur. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I agree. It's like I don't, I don't think there's a need for like redundancy in the process. That there's you know two other um, commissions or groups that are reviewing it 
the necessity for a third tunnel. So have to present review seems somewhat unnecessary, but there might be occasions where it might be like perspective from mm -hmm. the folks on the commission that might be different that might be valuable. So having the opportunity to see it and um, comment if we wish to do so might be advantageous to the process, but maybe not make it a requirement. Okay, I think for that it could be something like staff recommended staff recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's like a case by case basis. Case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Well, then I uh, call the Civic Design Committee meeting is adjourned at three forty.